Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the strengths of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Deuteronomium, Kapitel 30, 15 bis 20, eine Lesung aus dem fünften Buch Mose. Hiermit lege ich dir heute das Leben und das Glück, den Tod und das Unglück vor. Wenn du auf die Gebote des Herrn, deines Gottes, auf die ich dich heute verpflichte, hörst, indem du den Herrn, deinen Gott, liebst, auf seinen Wegen gehst und auf seine Gebote, Gesetze und Rechtsvorschriften achtest, dann wirst du leben und zahlreich werden. Und der Herr, dein Gott, wird dich segnen in dem Land, in das du hineinziehst, um es in Besitz zu nehmen. Wenn du aber dein Herz abwendest und nicht hörst, wenn du dich verführen lässt, dich vor anderen Göttern niederwirfst und ihnen dienst, dann, so erkläre ich euch heute, werdet ihr ausgetilgt werden. Ihr werdet nicht lange in dem Land leben, 
in das du jetzt über den Jordan hinüberziehst, um hineinzuziehen und es in Besitz zu nehmen. Den Himmel und die Erde rufe ich heute als Zeugen gegen euch an. Leben und Tod lege ich dir vor, Segen und Fluch. Wähle also das Leben, damit du lebst, du und deine Nachkommen. Liebe den Herrn, deinen Gott, hör auf seine Stimme und halte dich an ihm fest, denn er ist dein Leben. Er ist die Länge deines Lebens, das du in dem Land verbringen darfst, von dem du weißt, der Herr hat deinen Vätern Abraham, Isaak und Jakob geschworen, es ihnen zu geben. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Let us read the psalm responsively. I will begin and we will read the last verse together. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarrelling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labour of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on your way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, we'll never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said of those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows that you've made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Most of you who I know out here know that I love uh, art. And I can look out and I can see various uh, people out here who I've been to the museum with. For me, the museum is, is almost a sacred space. It's a place where I'm challenged to see things anew to develop new theories, new ways of seeing, new insights, new ways of capturing the questions that make life interesting. A couple of weeks back on my day off, Teresa and I visited a place we've been many times, and then I've been with some of you, the Lindbach House. It's one of my favorite museums in the whole world. And as we were walking around the painting and seeing the paintings that have become old familiar friends, I was paying attention to the little placards that they put underneath the title, that give the title and the artist's name. And they also have a little date under there or a little sentence under there that tells you how they were added to the collection. And as I was walking around this museum, this venerated museum with a world-renowned with a world-renowned collection, I noticed something and I thought about it for a minute. This museum keeps buying paintings. They don't just stop. They keep acquiring things. They have a whole department called an acquisitions department. And that, I know that sounds silly as something to strike you, but it's, it's kind of known for the collection that's already there. 
People come to visit it for what's already there, but they don't stop. Take, for instance, this painting that's there by Alexei von Jalinsky, this painting of the dancer Alexander Sakharov. It's always when you go up the stairs and you take a look to the left, it's the painting that's staring right at you. It's a masterpiece, an artwork that demands conversation, but it wasn't the last painting he ever painted. He didn't stop there. Imagine, if you will, that after he painted this painting, Jalinsky set down his brushes and said, well, I've done it. That's it. Art is over. Can't get any more uh, better than this. <laughs> can't get better than this. We can't progress any further. We can't add more to this. Imagine if he would have called a press conference and said, every artist everywhere, please put down your brushes. Insisting that since he'd reached the pinnacle of art, there was no longer any need to keep going. Or imagine if the museum just decided that they weren't going to buy any more paintings because they had the best ones already. We would instinctively say that they'd lost their minds. Because we know, we understand that art has to in some way Is we know that the conversation is not yet finished. For thousands of years, followers of Christ, like artists and museums, have, understand, have understood that we have to keep going. We have to keep exploring what it means to live in harmony with God and creation here and now. It's not enough just to accept the faith of the past. We have to keep going. Our tradition is one that moves, that changes, one that honors the past by taking the present and the future seriously. And we get this from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who did the same thing. In our gospel reading for the day, Jesus enters into a conversation, and it's one that he didn't start. It was one that was already going on, and it involves scripture and also the communities of faith that gather to interpret scripture together. In Jesus' day, different rabbis were going around teaching, and we know from scholarship that there were schools that were developing around these rabbis' teachings. They were basically lists of what the rabbis forbade and what they permitted. A rabbi's list uh, and set of rules was known at that time as the rabbi's yoke. A rabbi's yoke. A yoke is that thing they put around the head of an animal so that it can pull a plow. When you followed a certain rabbi, you were following this person because you believed that that rabbi's set of interpretations were the closest to what God intended for you and for your life. So that's what it means to take up a rabbi's yoke. If you, you remember in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus was talking about his teachings, his way of interpreting the scriptures. One theologian puts the situation of the day this way, and I quote, Most rabbis taught the yoke of a rabbi who had come before them. They repeated what they had heard. But every once in a while, a rabbi would come along who was teaching a new yoke, a new way of interpreting the Torah, the scriptures. This was rare and extraordinary. Now imagine, if you will, a rabbi who had this new perspective on the Torah was coming to your town. This rabbi who was making new interpretations of the Torah was said to have authority. The Hebrew, Hebrew word for authority is shmika. And you wanted to see someone who had shmika. This might not even happen in your lifetime. 
So you took the chance and you would hike for miles to hear him. A rabbi who taught the Shemika would say things like, you have heard it said, but I tell you. What he's saying is, you've heard people interpret the verse this way, but I tell you that there's this new uh, way to understand this, a new way to live out call, live out God's call. In essence, Jesus was joining a conversation, but not letting past interpretations hold him back, not letting the accepted way hold sway, not letting the past determine the future. Take, for instance, Jesus' discussion on divorce. He's entering into a discussion that was one of the great debates of his day. And we know from various sources that there were basically two camps on this. Two camps taught from two great teachers, Rabbi Hillel and Rabbi Shammai. And they taught different things about divorce, both drawing on the scriptures as their source. Now, Rabbi Hillel said that you could divorce whenever you wanted. He even has a quote saying, you can divorce if your soup is served cold. <laughs> Rabbi Shammai, on the other hand, said, no, you can't if your soup is, is served cold. No matter what, you stay together. Now, we don't have time to delve into Jesus's answer today on this, although it's an important issue. But what I want to to focus on is how Jesus answers all these questions, is how Jesus teaches us. This phrase that we see Jesus making several times in our scripture today, you have heard it said, but I say to you, remember that every time he says you have heard it said, he is quoting scripture. He's quoting scripture. He's quoting accepted teaching. And then he says, but, but, that but is really important. But I say to you, my point is, is Jesus was taking something accepted and going further. What Jesus invites us into as disciples is an ongoing conversation. As soon as we put a period there, instead of a question mark, we might have left the disciple train behind. As soon as we have all the answers, all the formulas, all things figured out, then we have left the discipleship game behind. Being a Christian isn't about intellectually assenting to a series of doctrines, a set of answers. It's not about memorizing the catechism or even following a set of rules. Being a disciple means that you love Jesus. And if you love Jesus, you love his way. The questioning, growing way of challenging assumptions, all through a lens of compassion. Notice that when Jesus talks about anger and divorce and making vows in today's reason, in today's reading, he doesn't just quote the scripture and stop there. He adds on. He continues to progress, continues to add perspective and nuance and shade, tone, shadow, dimension. For Jesus, scripture wasn't used to end a conversation. It was meant to start one. For Jesus, faith wasn't a stand-in for certainty. It was an invitation to engage the issues of his day, to engage what really matters, to continually wrestle with issues and to be open to new insights, new meaning. Now, there are many reasons why this is important. But I want to focus on just one, and it's this. When we commit to follow Jesus, we commit to being perpetually unfinished. Perpetually unfinished. I hope this is good news to you that God's not finished with you yet, that you and I are a work in progress. We as a church are a work in progress. We're not even designed for perfection, for reaching a pinnacle of perfection and putting brushes down. We're called to continually move forward, progress and change. 
We don't have to have all the right answers. I thought about this week as I was, over, as I was looking over former sermons that I've preached uh, on this day, just looking, what have I said before? I did this uh, this week and I thought to myself, well, I disagree with that guy. <laughs> I don't ever want to reach the point where I'm self-satisfied and think, well, I figured it all out. You and I are designed to be open-ended projects. People who are always taking in new information, taking in new scenery, uh, the new scenery of culture and society, taking in the insights of science and social science. That's one of the reasons why the Episcopal Church has been open to new teachings on sexuality, divorce, women becoming bishops and priests and a host of other issues. We don't assume that we are unfinished. Are finished. Yeah. It took me a second, but I got it. So right now, if you're in a season of life that's difficult, if you're hurting, if pain is what's most familiar to you, I want you to hear this. God is not finished with you. More is in store. Healing will come. Endure, as the song we sang today so poetically said. If you're, if you're riding high and experiencing the good times, still know that God's not finished with you. If you're holding on to a thread and barely making it, keep holding on. God's not finished with you. If your grief is palpable, just know that God's not finished with you. There will be a time when your grief is still there, but in a way that adds depth and color to the painting of your life. It doesn't leave, but it won't dominate the scene. God's not finished with you. Over the last few years, this church even has had difficult times, especially financially, but please know that God's not finished with us. We still have room to grow, more to do, more to learn, more help to give, more to live into and to create. But we have to commit to picking up the paintbrushes every day, to beginning anew, confident in the fact that when the muse strikes, that together we can create something beautiful. Thank God that God isn't finished with us yet. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray that Christ may be seen in the life of the Church. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters in Christ be strengthened by your grace. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts, so that our lives will reflect your holiness. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy hear us. You have called us to be a light to the world, so that those in darkness come to you. May our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. And we give thanks for the life of Janice and for the service held in celebration of her life yesterday. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be members of your body so that when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. And we pray for those who were trapped and their rescuers and the medical teams in Turkey and Syria and for everybody who has been injured or who has lost their homes and their belongings. We pray for Giza. We pray for Renata and her mother, for Jenny and Jim, Aurora and Sean, Ilza, Oscar, Dorothy, Erna, Jay, Nancy, Louisa, Nadia, Cynthia, Oli, Zana, Ulrika, Michael, Christina, Alan, Heide, Ernst, Helmut, and Heide Laura. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be the bride, where you, Lord, are the bridegroom. Prepare us for the wedding feast where we will be united with you forever. And we pray for the souls of Elfrida Hahn, Dorothea's mother, Jack Freeman, a friend of Malcolm, Gary Butler, Ciprain Onia, Anna Marie and Klaus. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Lord of the Church, you have called us into fellowship with all your saints. We unite our prayers with theirs and ask for grace to serve you with joy, May you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And by what we have done to you, we have done to you. We have in your face. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also with you. Please be seated. There's just a couple of announcements before we continue our worship together. First and foremost, if you're visiting with us, we extend to you a warm welcome. We believe it's the love of God that draws us all here. And in and through that love, we bid you welcome and invite you to join us after the service um, for a time of coffee hour so that we can get to know you better. There's a couple things coming up first on Wednesday evening, there's a choral even song here at uh, 7 p.m. Um, it's uh, here in Emmaus Kirsha, and Liz, is Liz in here? Sorry, Liz, there's Liz. Liz says after even song, she's heading to the um, Irish pub, and if you'd like to go with her, please talk to Liz. It's a chance that you can't miss. Um, this coming Saturday, the 18th at the Fry Evangelisch uh, Church here in, in Munich, we're celebrating the life of Jonathan Case at 2 p.m. And you're all invited to come to that. Um, I wanna, as we're approaching Lent, you'll notice that our Ash Wednesday service this year, we always celebrate our Ash Wednesday service with St. Willibrods, the old Catholic church, um, but we're not going to have the, the um, the service in their church this year because they're undergoing some reconstruction of their of their church. So we're going to be at the Evangelisch Reformiert Kirche, and the address is in your bulletin. So please mark that down. Um, we're also having a Saints of of Songwriting Lent course that you'll find information about in there, and I invite you to that time of study and fellowship. I also want to say a special word of of welcome to Dorothee. Um, for those of you who don't know, Dorothea is a, is a, was ordained here an Episcopal uh, priest, uh, raised up and ordained from this congregation. And she's now serving a congregation in Vienna, but she's in town and um, we're so blessed to have her with us this morning. So thank you very much. Um, Jane, you have a, an announcement. Good afternoon, everyone. This <laughs> is a visual announcement. This is Dan, the pancake man. And this is a pancake. And what you may not know about Dan, the pancake man, is that he really loves maple syrup. And he really loves maple syrup and lots of butter smothered all over his pancakes. But what you don't know is that I love it even more. So on Tuesday, February 21st at 6.30, you might want to come, even if you don't like pancakes, because it might be worth seeing the arm wrestling match that Dan, the pancake man, and I might be having over the maple syrup. But he will lose because this is a lemon. And I have been squeezing lemons for weeks. And my wrist and my arm is in very good shape. I am prepared to squeeze hundreds of lemons for my friends here in the church who don't like maple syrup. I don't get that, but whatever. They like lemons with sugar on their pancakes, and so they shall receive that on the evening. So if you're interested, 
and seeing Dan, Pancake Man, and me possibly having an arm wrestling contest over maple syrup, please sign up. I will be at the back of the church with a sign-up sheet. Thank you. <laughs> Throw it in there. <laughs> the pancake didn't hold up, it was store-bought. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, one uh, quick uh, announcement. So um, today is the Sunday in the Episcopal Church where we remember those uh, from our churches who uh, are in seminary. And we're asked to make uh, gifts to them. Uh, Starla, is, who was here at our church for several years, uh, went on to another church and is now in seminary. And if you'd like to make a gift in support of her, you can do so by giving your gift uh, to the church in her honor. And you can talk to Martin more about this process. Martin Razor, for those who don't know you. I think everybody knows, yeah, most people know you. Um, you can talk to Martin about that, that process. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command of Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, 
that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. This is the banquet of Christ. In his kingdom there are no outcasts. Wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at God's table. And now we will join our community online in saying together the prayer for spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, as you promised to be with us in the bread and wine, that is your body and blood. Grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us, be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care now and forever. Amen.
glory of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body 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 of Christ, the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Receive myself. Oh, sorry. I'm still used to do it last. No, the one that we did was when I left.
pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Jesus Christ. 